So the consensus online seems to be that using Copilot or other AI assistants while learning to code is awful. And people say that this is bad because reading code is not writing code. Because you're giving yourself a crutch. Because you're supposed to feel frustrated. Or you may produce stuff you don't understand. And actually, these are all very good points that are generally backed up by learning research and learning principles. So you might think, can't I just learn by reading the code that Copilot spits out for me? And the answer is, no, you can't learn very well like that. See, reading code is very passive, and research has shown that passive learning is quite ineffective. Just rereading things, just watching videos can be a starting point, but by itself it's not very effective, and this would extend to using Copilot and just reading the code it gives you as a way of learning. If you're not actually writing code, that's very passive, and that's going to be ineffective, and learning like this is not the type of learning that's going to result in meaningful understanding, it's not going to encode knowledge and skills in a flexible and durable manner that's going to help you out months from now when you're actually doing real work. And let's think about this. Do you think you could get good at cooking just by watching cooking videos? No, okay. <laughs> uh, if that were true, I'd be a master chef by now. I love watching cooking videos. I don't actually cook very often. It's not, coding is not the type of skill you're ever going to get really good at just by watching videos. It's not just an accumulation of knowledge, it's a skill you must practice. Now what's even worse about using Copilot or other AI assistants while learning to code is that they may give you a false sense of understanding. And so they've done plenty of research about this, and basically they've shown, for example, that students who reread their own notes feel like they understand very well, but then perform poorly on tests. And that same illusion of understanding or illusion of competency may apply here. You're reading the very clear, well-written, well-commented uh, ChatGPT or Copilot code or whatever AI you're using, and you say, oh, okay, I get it, but you don't get it. That may be an illusion. You may be overestimating your own capabilities, and they've shown that this type of illusion exists in other areas, such as college students rereading their notes. What's even worse about this is that if you were writing the code yourself, rather than just using Copilot all the time to generate lots of stuff, you would have more opportunities to see where your understanding fails. But if you're using Copilot a lot, you're missing those opportunities to see where your understanding falls short, you're missing opportunities to see where you need to learn more, and thus your level of understanding versus what you think your level of understanding is, continues to drift. And so to me, if you do this for a long time, it's almost like you're going into a foreign country and you're using GPS and phone translation to do everything. Now, if you're only on vacation for a week, maybe that's fine, but let's say you're there for a long time, you're traveling around, you're walking around, you're going to different places, you're translating everything on your phone, you feel fine. What happens when your phone dies? You're in a strange place, you don't know how to navigate or get anywhere, and you don't even know how to ask the locals for help. Not only are you lost, but you lack the skills and knowledge to get unlost. And this really happens. I read a Reddit post while preparing this video of a man who was using ChatGPT to write all his code for about eight months, and he reached a point where the AI failed and couldn't fix itself. It was just kind of repeating itself, doing the same mistakes, and he said, I don't really know any of the code I've written. I don't understand this. How can I get out of this situation? And I think the way he gets out is that he gets fired, right? Um, that's what's supposed to happen there. You didn't really understand, and you shouldn't have been doing that for eight months, and you get what's coming to you. So don't do that. Don't rely on Copilot or other generative AI too much while learning to code because it leads to this illusion of understanding. Now, what if you're not really relying on Copilot or other generative tools that often. I still think this is bad while learning. The thing is when you encounter difficulty while learning, when you encounter something you don't remember or can't quite figure out, that's actually an opportunity to learn. When you just use this to skirt difficulties, you're denying yourself an opportunity to develop problem solving and reasoning skills in whatever language or framework or system you are learning right now. 
you're cheating yourself, right? And so, seeing Copilot's answers before you write code prevents a few key parts of learning to code. You are not thinking of the syntax and remembering it yourself, so it's going to be harder and take longer for you to learn the syntax in any meaningful way, if you ever do. You're preventing yourself from making basic design choices when Copilot spits out function headers and stuff like that for you. How many parameters should your function have? How should you pass those? What should you name things? And these kind of basic design choices are quite critical to practice to make nice, readable, professional code. When Copilot spits all this out for you and you just hit tab and it all gets done, you're denying yourself the chance to practice those skills. And really, if you're using it for more than that, you're denying yourself the chance to think about these larger systems and reason about them and solve bigger problems. And reasoning about them and reasoning about the design choices over the long term is what builds your ability to solve bigger problems in a more professional and polished way. If you deny yourself those opportunities, you may plateau very quickly. And obviously that's a big problem. Nobody wants to be at the same skill level for years on end. And just remember, the hard parts are where the real learning is. If you just use GPT or Copilot or whatever occasionally for the hard parts, you're skipping the opportunity to learn, so I really think this is a problem if you're focused on learning. Now there's a few great reasons why, hey, actually you should use these tools when learning. And the first one is that this can greatly increase your productivity, and for many people, building projects, getting projects working, can be hugely motivational. They love to build things, show them off, make progress, and they may put more time in overall or have higher levels of engagement while they're learning if they can get things done a bit faster. So that's an advantage. Now, another thing that I thought about is I remember specifically one time while I was learning to code back in college, or I knew how to code, but I was with... C++, and I put a semicolon in the wrong place, and I just couldn't find it, and the uh, compiler was giving me this vague message, and it took about three hours to figure out what was going on. Was that really worth the trouble to learn that in C++ you have to put a semicolon at the end of a class decoration? No, okay, that, that was worth maybe ten minutes of trouble. I certainly remember that now as a result of looking for it for three hours, but was it worth three hours? Maybe not. Maybe that's actually not an efficient way to learn. Another reason to keep using Copilot when you're learning is that if you're starting to get good, if you're kind of reached an intermediate level, you can use this to skip tedious parts and spend your time focusing on what you need to learn now. So that's just more time efficient. And finally, is it really smart to deny yourself a chance to learn the tools of the future? For all we know, this is what coding looks like in five or ten years. For all we know, just manually typing stuff in is going to die, and it's going to die quickly. So is it smart Is it smart to completely deny yourself the chance to learn something that maybe everybody's using every day in the next few years? And even now, a lot of people would say, yes, I'm using it every day. It makes me hugely productive. So this is a good point. These are all good reasons why you should use Copilot when learning to code. So what's the conclusion here? Should you, the learner, use Copilot while learning? The focus in this video is learning, not really getting work done. I am a teacher. Uh, I tutor people in this for a living. So this is what I'm focused on is learning. So I think it's generally a bad idea to have it inside your IDE or to have it enabled while you're learning. Now if you need to use ChatGPT or whatever tool you're on, to look up a few quick references in the way that you might look up the meaning of a word in the dictionary, that's okay. Some of the time we all have to look stuff up, and it can be a lot faster than looking it up in other ways, and it's generally reliable if you're looking up straightforward, simple things, not using it to actually write your code. So I think that's fine, but it doesn't need to be in your IDE. If it's in your IDE and you're just seeing all the autofills and hitting tab a lot, you're denying yourself those chances to learn. And just be clear to yourself, on any given day, at any given time, are you learning right now or are you getting work done? I think if you're getting work done, it's perfectly fine to enable it. It increases productivity and you're gaining experience using a tool of the future. And of course you need to do that. But if you're learning, 
disable it, right? If you're learning, disable it or just turn it off or don't install it at all so you don't feel tempted to use it and just use the AI in a different window or whatever for reference. And, you know, it's okay to enable it just to try it out. I think, you know, get your free trial on whatever service you're using, try it out, see how it works, just so you have an idea of that. But it doesn't need to be something you're using all the time if your focus is learning. Even for work, I think it's okay and a good idea to consider turning it off some of the time. Maybe for one hour a week or something like that. Why is this a good idea? Well, when you turn it off, you're really making yourself review the basics. And you're also checking your own level of understanding. You're not allowing this gap to open between what you can actually do and what you think you can do. And you're also reviewing the basics, as I just mentioned. Just remember, the difficulty is where the learning is. So if you're always using it to skip looking something up or skip writing a function header yourself and stuff like that that you don't want to think about because it's a little hard and you might have to step back and reason about this, just remember, the difficulty is often where the real learning is. More effortful learning has been proven in a lot of different ways to result in more lasting learning, more meaningful learning. So just remember that. Thank you for watching the video. Have a great day.